Okay, welcome back. So the title of this little lesson is called Explosion. And I'm going to use some more examples of negation introduction and negation elimination. And at the same time, I'm going to show you something interesting about SD that corresponds to some of the other things we've talked about before. So if you recall, we've said that when you have contradictory or when you have an inconsistent set, anything follows, right? So if you have an argument that has contradictory premises or the premises form an inconsistent set, then anything follows, right? And we, we, I think we loosely call this explosion at some point, right? It's the fact that anything can follow from uh, an inconsistent set. Well, we're actually going to get the same property in SD. So remember, let's, let's do it like this. So suppose we have a set of premises where we say something like uh, not a, actually I'm going to make sure the scope of the sentence of this connective is going to be right. So suppose we have a sentence that says not a and uh, c and then we have another sentence that says uh, a and we have the other sentence that says c. So suppose these are our primary assumptions. So hopefully you'll be able to see that, well, wait a minute, I have A and I have C. I know that conjunction introduction is going to let me introduce them, uh, <laughs> conjunction introduction is going to allow me to build a new sentence, A and B, and that sentence is actually going to contradict uh, this sentence over here, which means the premises that I'm starting out with are actually contradictory. And uh, hopefully you see that, and, and you're exactly right to, to think that. And so what I want to show you is because our uh, our initial assumptions are inconsistent, we can actually prove anything we want as a result of that. So I'm going to show you that I want to prove, so let's say I'm going to derive I'm going to derive anything I like. Uh, I'm going to say uh, Z and why? Uh, maybe this stands for zebras are pink and yellow marshmallows exist on the moon. Uh, whatever I like. I mean, I, I, and I mean this seriously. You can make up whatever you want. And I'm going to show you how you can derive that when you have an inconsistent set of premises. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to use negation elim elimination. So I'm going to have as my conclusion Z and Y. That's going to be my conclusion. And you're going to notice one of the interesting tricks you'll see is I won't actually even need to use conjunction introduction to do this. Although there will be a way that you can do this, I won't even need to do that. So this last part, I'm going to want to do this by negation elimination. And so what I need to do is assume the opposite. Uh, the negation of that sentence. So I'm going to have not, oh, come on, there we go, not Z and Y. Okay, and remember the way that negation, so this I'm going to try to get by negation elimination, right? So I'm going to assume the negation of the sentence, and then I'm going to get a contradiction, and by getting that contradiction, I'm going to be able to eliminate this negation, and then I'm going to be able to uh, close the subderivation, and then I'm going to be able to infer this. So how do I do that? Well, I need to I need to build up the negation, uh, the contradiction, as we just said, and I can use a strategy that we talked about informally before. So we already have a, and just for the sake of using reiteration, I'm going to write it here. Just to make it extremely perspicuous. So we have lines 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. And I get A just from reiterating from 2. And I can get C 
reiterating from uh, three. And then I can uh, now use conjunction introduction because I have A and C, I can now infer A and C, and I get that by conjunction introduction, and I need to cite 5 and 6, and I could have also done a shortcut. I could have also just said 2 and 3, but just to make this a little bit more perspicuous, um, I've just used reiteration, and reiteration doesn't get used that much, so it feels kind of lonely, so I thought it should be nice to it. Okay, so we have line 7 here, and then now I already have uh, the negation of the sentence up here from 1, so I can reiterate that, then I get A and C, and I get that by reiterating from 1, And now I have my contradiction, right? I have A and C, and you can imagine that there's parentheses around this, and then I have not A and C, and that's a contradiction. And by the rule of negation elimination, I can then take my starting assumption and I can uh, eliminate that. So I can have here uh, 9, Z and Y by negation elimination, and I can just cite lines 4, 2, Oh, come on. There we go. The subderivation 4 to 8. And so you might be thinking, well, wait a minute. I mean, if I can if I can prove Z and Y just by having assumed this, you know, can't I do the opposite? And if you have that intuition, th that's exactly right. I could have just as well had, uh, let me do this. I could have just as well started out with Z and Y and used then, instead of negation introduction, I could have actually used, or sorry, instead of using negation elimination, I could have used negation introduction. In that case, I would have gotten, it's not the case that Z and Y. And here I would have used negation introduction instead of negation elimination. And that would have worked just as well, right? Because I just need to have a starting assumption I need to get a contradiction, and then I can introduce the negation of the auxiliary assumption that I had. And the reason why this works is because we, ha we started out with a set of premises that were contradictory, right? This, if we form a set from uh, premises 1, 2, and 3, from these sentences, we'll get an inconsistent set. And from an inconsistency, you can prove and you can derive anything you like. So this is what we call explosion. As soon as we have a contradiction, every other sentence of SL follows. And, and that's what we just showed here, by showing that you, I could have proved anything I wanted, Z and Y, and I could have also proved the negation of that as well, using negation introduction. So this is, this is called explosion, and this is uh, an, an interesting um, property of, uh, that, that you might not have expected when we first started doing logic that uh, it allows, so as soon as you get a contradiction, logic just says, look, um, if you've given me something as bad as a contradiction, I can prove anything you like. Uh, okay, so that's our introduction for explosion, and that's also uh, another example of using both negation introduction and negation elimination.